Hey team, I've recently been asked multiple times about how to be better at documentation in the emergency department. Since we all want to get paid for the work we do, I made this video to share my tips and tricks for documentation. I'm going to try to summarize the 2024 changes to the emergency medicine reimbursement and coding guidelines in less than 10 minutes. If you have more questions, visit the ASAP website, which I will link in the description. To understand billing, you need to focus on this grid. These are the evaluation and management codes for emergency department visits. About 85% of all codes submitted for reimbursement in emergency medicine are these five codes. The 99281 is the lowest E&M code, while the 99285 is the highest code, excluding critical care, which we'll discuss separately. Notice that it is all based on medical decision making. It does not include the history or physical exam. This is not used for billing anymore. Let's focus on the details involved to bill for a 99285 chart. Many times we don't document enough information to meet the criteria for a 99285 chart, which is also known as a level five chart. There are three columns. We'll go through them each individually. First, the COPA or complexity of problems addressed. Then there's the data column. And finally, the risk column. As we go through the columns, I don't want to discuss the minutia of billing, but rather how to document each one of these appropriately. For the COPA column, this is the complexity of problems addressed. This is going to look at the number and severity of problems you have addressed in your ED visit. So it's important to list all the problems or diagnoses that were addressed in the visit, and even multiple low severity conditions can increase complexity. To help the billers and coders, add the terms acute or severe to clearly indicate the severity of the problem if this is appropriate. Now we'll move on to the data column. This one's a little big and involves three categories, but let's go through each point. So first, you want to review any notes that originated outside of your emergency department. This could be a discharge summary, a primary care visit, an urgent care note. However, it does not include previous emergency department visits to your ED. It has to be from outside of your ED. The next one, you want to document that you reviewed your labs and tests. Most electronic medical records will pull in that you obtained a unique test, so this doesn't need to be documented. And then finally, the independent historian. So you want to document that you discuss the situation with anyone that is not the patient, such as EMS, family members, or parents of kids. They have to provide additional history, but this does not include a translator. The next category includes independent interpretation of a test performed by another physician. This usually means an EKG or an x-ray since they're read by cardiologists or radiologists. And I suggest that when you interpret your EKG, you document the EKG has been independently interpreted by myself, which shows, and then lists the EKG interpretation. Don't just say reviewed because that is ambiguous to the billers and coders. And finally is category three. This is discussion of management or test interpretation with external physicians. So this is usually a consultant that you're discussing the patient care with. However, it also includes hospitalists during the admission process. This is very important and often missed that when you discuss the case with the hospitalist, you want to document that and it counts for category three. Finally, we move on to the risk column. This has to do with how risky was the patient visit. It mostly entails medications that you gave the patient or procedures that you performed, but let's go through each one. Actually, the next slide will talk about the drug therapy uh, requiring intensive monitoring for toxicity. And this second one is not very clear, but it has to do with procedural risk. Third is emergency major surgery, such as appendectomy or cholecystectomy. Fourth is hospitalization, which is pretty clear. Fifth is making the patient a DNR or de-escalating care. And sixth is if you gave the patient parenteral controlled substances such as IV or intramuscular opiates or benzodiazepines. This is a really important slide. These are medications that require intensive monitoring according to the guidelines, and I've made it into four groups. First is the most common group here. So note that IV contrast for a CT scan is included in medications that require intensive monitoring. I repeat, IV contrast for a CT scan meets this criteria. So this is probably going to be the most common way that you meet this criteria. Other medications include vancomycin, droperidol or haldol, ketamine, some blood products, adenosine, IV magnesium. If you give any sedation medications such as Versed, ketamine, 
fall automate, those also meet the criteria. Anticoagulants such as unfractionated heparin, subcutaneous low molecular weight heparin, uh, any DOAC such as apixaban also meet the criteria. And finally, I have the critical care medications. These medications meet the criteria, but you will probably be billing for critical care in this situation, so it's not as important that you document it, this. Insulin, epinephrine, norepinephrine, nicardipine, induction meds or paralytic meds for RSI, or thrombolytics. Remember that poorly worded bullet point that says decision regarding elective major surgery with identified patient or procedure risk factors? Yeah, I feel that's poorly worded. It initially appears that the patient has to undergo surgery to meet this criteria. However, you can actually get credit for it if you perform any of the high-risk procedures listed here, such as a fracture reduction, joint dislocation reduction, chest tube, cardioversion, thoras, paras, central lines, CPR, etc. To summarize, there are three columns that we're going to look at to bill for a level five chart, and that's the COPA, the data, and the risk. For COPA, you're going to want to document all medical problems addressed at the visit and add acute or severe to the diagnosis if it's appropriate. For the data column, you're going to document any review of notes that came from outside of your emergency department, as well as discussions with EMS or family. Be sure to use the phrase independent interpretation instead of just reviewed for EKGs or plain films. Finally, make sure to document discussions with consultants and hospitalists. And then in the risk column, you want to make sure that you're aware of the most common medications that require intensive monitoring for toxicity, especially IV contrast for CT scans. If a high risk procedure was performed, document it. If you gave IV or IM benzodiazepines or opiates, document it. If you have any questions, please refer to the ASAP guidelines linked in the description and feel free to email me at the link below.